is it going? Uh, oh, it, it went live to my Facebook? Good morning. Rick and Mary Jo Everly here. We just want to let you guys know that we miss being in touch with you. We miss your hugs, your smiles, and we miss the music. Speaking of music, the praise team has been uh, pretty good at getting things recorded and sent out for Sunday morning, but it's just not the same as being at a church and playing in front of a congregation. And we really miss that, and we can't wait to get back to seeing you again on Sundays. So everybody, be safe, and we'll all be together soon. Bye-bye. Sunday. Friends, the Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship at Cumberland United Methodist Church, where discipleship comes alive. So glad that you could be joining via Facebook or via YouTube if you're watching later. Thank you to your thank you for your commitment to sacred community at CUMC. By supporting God's work at CUMC, you help the love of God to come alive in our church and in our community. So uh, I want to point our attention to a few upcoming things. This week begins the sermon series on the book of Job, or it continues the sermon series on the book of Job uh, with the sermon series entitled Worm Theology. So this is part four, and it focuses on God's faithfulness in the raging whirlwind. So uh, please keep reading along in the book of Job. Uh, also, we're continuing our homebrewed Christianity series, uh, study series on the Old Testament. It's ho Israel's holy in your face God. So if you want to be a part of this study, or if you want to learn about other things we have going on at CUMC, you can join at CUMC at SBC Global or CUMC219 at sbcglobal.net. That's CUMC219 at sbcglobal.net. And that email address is our church office, and it'll get you connected to all of the happenings at CUMC. So stay tuned to your weekly announcements, the church Facebook page, www.cumberlandumc.com for more information. And now let's join our hearts and minds together for our call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout to the rock of our salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth.
Friends, let us join together in this opening prayer. God of light and truth, you are beyond our grasp or conceiving. Before the brightness of your presence, the angels veil their faces. With reverence and adoring love, we acclaim your glory and sing your praise, for you have shown us your truth and love in Jesus Christ, our Savior. At this time, as you are able, I invite you to join me in our children's message. Job was a wealthy man as the greatest man in the area where he lived. Job was also known as a man of perfect integrity who tried to resist sin. He had a relationship with God and was committed to following God's plan. One day, Satan came before God. God asked Satan if he had noticed Job, a man who followed God. God said that no one on earth was like Job. Satan claimed that Job only followed God because God had protected and blessed Job. He said that if God took away all Job owned, then Job would not follow God anymore. So God gave Satan permission to take away all Job owned. But he was not allowed to hurt Job. Satan sent men to steal Job's oxen, donkeys, and camels, and he sent lightning to kill Job's sheep. He also caused Job's children to die. In one day, Job lost all of his wealth and his children. But Job continued to follow God. Again, Satan came before God. God again asked him if he had noticed Job. God told him that even after all Satan had done, Job still followed God and kept his integrity. Satan said that if Job became sick, he would not praise God anymore. So God gave Satan permission to make Job sick, but God would not let Satan kill Job. Job became ill with boils all over his skin. His wife thought he should blame God, but Job told her that God was always in control whether Job experienced good times or bad times. Three of Job's friends Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar came to visit him so they could comfort him. Job shared with his friends how confused and grieved he was over all he had experienced. Instead of comforting Job, his friends told Job that he must have sinned to cause these bad things to happen to him. His friends believed that suffering only came to people who sinned. They believed that Job was being punished for a sin he had committed and that Job should repent so God would restore his good fortune. Job was very upset that his friends had not comforted him and that they did not believe he was innocent. Job responded that he knew he had not sinned. Job wished he had a mediator to represent him before God. Because Job could not explain why he was suffering, he wanted some answers from God. Finally, Elihu, another friend of Job's, explained that God was not silent. Elihu accused Job of insisting on his righteousness to the point that he implied God was unjust. Elihu argued that God was righteous, merciful, and just. He reminded Job that God was all-powerful and sovereign over all. After Elihu spoke to Job, God spoke to Job through a whirlwind. God asked Job if he was there when God made the earth. Was Job the one who told the sea where it should stop? Did Job decide when the sun would rise or when it would snow? Did Job put the stars in the sky? God used all of these questions to help Job understand that God was sovereign, all-powerful, and good. Job realized that he had spoken about things he did not understand, and he repented of his earlier words and attitude. God restored all of Job's wealth and doubled the amount of possessions he had before he lost them all. All of his relatives and former friends came to a special dinner at Job's house to comfort Job. Job had 10 more children and lived 140 years after his suffering. He saw his grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. 
would be born and grow up before he died. Job's suffering and his request for a mediator gives us a simple glimpse of our Savior Jesus. Neither Job nor Jesus experienced suffering because they had sinned. Unlike Job, Jesus never questioned why he had to suffer. Jesus understood that we needed him to pay the price for our sin and be our mediator before God. Will you join me in this invitation to offering? The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all those who live in it. Let us share in our gifts for the uplift of God's kingdom, the realm of goodness and justice in heaven and here on earth. Thank you for your commitment to continuing God's work at Cumberland UMC through your giving. As a worship and leadership team, we are extremely grateful for those who continue to make the work of God possible at CUMC through your generosity. So the best ways to give are as follows. You can do a traditional method of giving through mailing your giving to the church at Cumberland UMC, 219 North Musing, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229. Uh, the other two methods of giving are through GiveLevi and PayPal. So if you go to www.cumberlandumc.com and scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll notice that there are two ways of giving. You can either give through GiveLevi or through PayPal. Both are um, intuitive and, and pretty simple to use, but if you need help, uh, we're happy to help you as part of the leadership team. So God bless you, friends, and thank you for continuing to be a part of God's work at CUMC. Will you join me in this prayer of dedication? Blessed are you, O God of creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and the service of your kingdom. Amen. Will you join me in this call to prayer? We praise God for his mercies, for your goodness that has created us, for grace that has sustained us, for discipline that has corrected us, for patience that is born with us, for love that has redeemed us. At this time, you're invited to share in your praises and concerns, dropping them in the comment section so that we can, as a community, lift them up in prayer or in celebration. You don't journey alone. God is with you and your community is too. So please share your joys and concerns at this time.
friends, what makes a community true and really the beloved community is through honestly sharing with each other. And so it, it's a privilege to lead us in this time of, of joys and concerns. We, we celebrate what goes on in each other's lives that's positive, but we also uh, bear each other's burdens as, as scripture uh, mandates that we do. And so I want to start off with uh, a couple of praises. So Jesse Reed has a birthday on Wednesday. And so we say, all right, and praise God for Jesse. Um, not only for all he does at Cumberland, he does so much, um, but, but just who he is and, and, um, and God's light that shines through him. So all right, and praise God for Jesse. Um, and speaking of God's light and love shining through people, Mary, Joe, and Rick, um, yeah, apologies for the worship service starting a little bit um, a little bit later than usual. I was having issues with uh, with the computer, but um, Mary, Joe, and Rick, thank you. I think most of you were still able to see their their awesome greeting. Um, and we know, just like you said, it's not the same as being together um, in person. But it was it was really good to to see your face, and so thank you. Um, Additionally, uh, in terms of other praises, Fred Reese, um, he's doing a lot better and he's home, I know, um, with uh, the issues he was having with um, circulation. And those things get, get scary at times. It's always scary to have someone who you love and care about who's in the hospital. So um, he's home from the hospital and I know uh, Terry is, is pumped and is thrilled about that. So. Uh, we say all right and praise God for for Fred. Um, also, speaking of birthdays, it's Donna Sparks' birthday today too. And so, uh, Donna, you bring um, you bring so much just love and light. And so we're so uh, so glad to lift you up as uh, on your birthday today. Um, now, switching to concerns, um, just wanted to put a couple in front of us again. Um, so just continue to pray for, for Jordan and his, his migraines that he's having and Kathy and Jesse as they um, care for their son who's uh, you know, across the country. So um, Kathy and Jesse, for Jordan, we pray with you. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, additionally, Shirley Miller is wanting uh, prayers for her daughter, Haley. Um, her daughter, Haley's husband, Wayne, is suffering now from bacterial meningitis. So um, just continue to, to keep Shirley, but also her daughter Haley and Wayne in your prayers. Um, additionally, uh, Missy Combes is having some stomach issues. She's feeling um, better, but there are a series of doctor's appointments related to that. And um, just continue to keep, keep Misty, uh, the whole Combes family in your prayers. Um, so uh, Misty, we pray with you, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, Judy Pry, uh, Jerry Grunyard's lifted up this one. She has breast cancer and is having a mastectomy soon. And so uh, with Jerry, for Judy, uh, we pray with you, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, with Beth Ann, we were praying for Mike Schrader. Um, as you guys know, I think it was in the... Um, he was in the newsletter this week, but uh, Mike's been having some um, obstructive bowel issues. And so um, it's, it's, he's recovering, um, but Beth Ann's prayer is that they can both accept a, a slower pace of healing than they thought was going to happen. Um, so uh, just keep, keep Beth Ann in your prayers. Um, so for, Keep Beth Ann and Mike in your prayers. So for the Schrader family, um, especially for Mike, we pray with you, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah, and then um, I think we're all kind of following the news story of, of the president's uh, President Donald Trump's COVID-19. Um, so I think it's a, it's a also even a bigger symbol of how how 
we're not through the woods on this COVID-19 um, real pandemic and just just complete um, complete you know public health crisis. And so just for Donald Trump and for all else who um, who are experiencing symptoms of COVID-19, uh, we pray with you and God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And so, friends, um, just because we're ending this time of prayers and concerns now doesn't mean that we stop praying or being concerned with each other. And that's a constant thing. So just uh, we pray or I encourage you to uh, send your prayer requests into uh, cumc219 at sbcglobal.net and um, or also just message the Facebook page or most of you have my cell phone number. Um, just feel free to, to text me any prayer concerns too. Um, yeah, and it's my honor to lead us in this pastoral prayer. One other thing too, I will say, uh, stay on. Uh, I will now lead us prayer. in our pastoral yeah, prayer. For, um, God. God of creation, you made all things in your wisdom and in your love you save us. We pray for the whole creation overcome what is evil, make right what is wrong, feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice so that all your children may enjoy the earth you have made and joyfully sing your praises. We pray for the President of the United States, Donald Trump and his family, the White House staff and others who may be experiencing symptoms of COVID-19. We pray for healing and we pray that this disease of COVID-19 can be contained and eradicated. Give wisdom to scientists, public health officials, doctors and nurses as they make decisions often with incomplete information. Give them strength in your eternal wisdom. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you called us to be the church of Jesus Christ. Keep us one in faith and service together, breaking bread together and proclaiming the good news to all the world that all may believe that you are love and turn to your ways and live in the light of your truth. Give us strength when we gather virtually missing each other due to the reality of the pandemic. Help us to continue to live into your reality of beloved community, even when it may be hard to do so. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us join together in praying the prayer taught to us through Christ, which says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Job, chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind, Who is this darkening counsel? with words lacking knowledge. Prepare yourself like a man. I will interrogate you and you will respond to me. Uh, the establishing order, where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me, you know, who set the measurements? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring tape on it? Uh, oh, that its footings sunk. Who laid its quarter stone while morning stars sang in unison and all the divine being shouted who enclosed the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb when i made the clouds its garment and dense clouds its wrap when i imposed my limits on it put a bar and doors and said you may come this far no farther hear your proud waves stop in your lifetime you have commanded the morning and formed the dawn of its place so that I would take hold of the earth by its edges and shake the wicked, wicked out of it. Do you turn over like a clay for a seal so that it stands out like a colorful garment? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So when I think about this text, I think it's a little strange that Job goes to God after pouring out his heart for 30 or more chapters and instead of meeting Job with what seems like compassion, it almost seems as if God refuses to answer Job's prayers 
and instead talks about whirlwinds and creation and animals. It's got me scratching my head a little bit. It's like God is answering the question that Job did not ask. So in this election season, it's easy to wonder, is God being like a politician? Is God handing over this question of Job's fate because it's too difficult to answer? Is God just talking off the cuff because he doesn't want to answer Job's prayers? So at this point of the story, Job has really gone through it. He has been through uh, what some people would call H-E double hockey sticks. Uh, He has suffered and suffered and suffered, and yet he's still faithful to God. I mean, he's lost his family, he's lost his wealth, he's lost his health. Um, He would make a good country music artist at this point. Uh, And not even Taylor Swift pop country, but like true suffering country artist. That is, that's Job's lot at this point. But instead of having a listening ear like a cab driver in a country song or a waitress or even a friend, it seems like God is taking this poor soul, Job, and instead of offering him comfort, it seems, it seems like he's just telling Job what Job doesn't know. So this passage has made it clear, and this whole book of Job for the first 38 chapters has made it clear that Job is faithful to God, but is God faithful to Job? So God tells Job, where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you know who set its measurements. Surely you know who stretched a measuring tape on it. Have you gone to the sea sources? Have you walked in the chamber of the deep? Have death's gates been revealed to you? Have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you surveyed earth's expanses? Tell me if you want to know everything about it. Where's this road that leads to where the the light dwells, darkness? Where is it located? Can you loosen the reins of Orion? Can you guide the stars at their proper times? Can you lead the bear with her cubs? Do you know heaven's flaws? Can you impose its rule on earth? So God is what may seem at first as a dismissive, um, informative lecture when Job is looking for comfort is really God saying, Job, man, look, I know you're hurting. I know you're frustrated and annoyed. I know you're losing a little belief, but I also know that you're holding on. He's saying, Job, I know you don't have all the answers, and it may seem a little bit scary right now, but even your lifetime is, is a glimpse. It is this blip on the timeline of eternity, so please just trust in my wisdom. Please just trust in my wisdom. God is saying to Job. And the thing is, this isn't like a fine-tuned theological argument that God is making. He's not uh, talking about dynamics of power and action and human freedom and predestination and why his will will um, uh, ultimately triumph. No, God is making it simple. God is saying, trust me. I am your God, and I have ordered all of this out of chaos, and I'll bring order to the chaos of your life too, Job. And so if I can be vulnerable with you for a moment, I'll say that I get frustrated like Job too. I'm a planner, I'm a thinker, I'm a doer, and all of that is harder during this time of COVID-19 related uncertainty. Sometimes I feel like I try to outthink or outplan God, but when I do, God always reminds me, sometimes lovingly, sometimes with a smack on the head, that I'm human. And that he is God, and I am just a guy who's trying to understand him and teach people about him. The author Donald Miller says, Many of our attempts to understand Christian faith have only cheapened it. I can no more understand the totality of God than the pancake I made for breakfast understands the complexity of me. The little we do understand that grain of sand our minds are capable of grasping, those ideas such as God is good, God feels, God loves, God knows all, are enough to keep our hearts dwelling on his majesty 
and otherness forever. And it doesn't mean we stop trying. It doesn't mean we stop studying, guys. Friends, I know this is a, a hard year, and this is a year that, that none of us will ever forget, just due to its strangeness, due to its challenges. But God is calling us to be the church. And yeah, we don't stop studying, we don't stop planning, we don't stop researching or working or learning all that we can about God. But even when it frustrates you like it's frustrated me, even when we don't have all the answers, we need to trust that God does and that God is always creating a new opportunity for grace, for redemption, and for love. And even if that might frustrate us like it frustrates Job, that's enough. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, thank you that you love us enough to remind us that you are God and we are not. God, forgive us for the times in which we try to be God and we try to take on too much. Allow us to rest our restless hearts in you. And this we ask in your gracious and holy name. Amen. Will you join me in this communion prayer? Holy God, you commanded light to shine out of darkness, divided the sea and dry land, created the vast universe and called it good. You made us in your image to live with each other in love. You gave us the breath of life and freedom to choose your way. 
You promised yourself in covenant with Abraham and Sarah and told us your purpose and commandments through Moses and called for justice in the cry of the prophets. Through long generations, you have been faithful and kind to all of your children. As your children, we have fallen short and we have not heard the cries of the downtrodden. We have forgotten your word. Free us and forgive us for joyful obedience. Thank you for your presence today with us in your broken body and your poured out blood. Once we were no people, and now we are God's people, forgiven and reconciled. God calls us to be community once again. Nothing can separate you from the love of God found in Jesus Christ. His body and blood are given for all. So let us join together at God's table and receive this grace that we were freely given. It was on the night in which Christ was betrayed that he took bread and after giving thanks, broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. So friends, let us together partake in the body of Christ. That same night when supper was over, Christ took the cup, poured it out for his disciples and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So friends, let us partake in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. Holy God, born of Mary, you share our life. Eating with sinners, you welcome us. Guiding your people, you lead us. Visiting the sick, you heal us. Dying on the cross, you save us. We thank you for being with us in this meal. Give us the grace to be your body and blood for this world, we pray. Amen. Friends, receive this blessing. May the God of peace 
make you holy in every way and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the triune God, be blessed. Have a great week. See you later. God bless you. Amen. Uh, friends, um, please continue to um, to for each other. Uh, have a safe and wonderful week. Wear your mask and sit uh, and be six feet apart. Um, one thing I want to mention is um, I encourage you to to join this this room of coffee and conversations that we'll have just click that that zoom url and it should be able to to get you there right after worship um also keep the family of of, of robin potter in your prayers robin's daughter uh, katie she was getting phone calls while helping to um, helping to lead worship today and uh, those phone calls were saying that katie is diagnosed with COVID 19 so so with the Potter family, we pray with you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers for you. Uh, friends, um, we're thinking thin. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, here in a little bit.